it's Melanie Atkinson here, Realtor with Smith & Associates in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. And today I'm doing something that I don't normally do, which is a live feed on YouTube and Facebook to answer your questions and go over some of the pressing topics that I get phone calls about. So I wanted to do this because the real estate market is changing very quickly. And I wanted to make sure I was getting information to you guys as fast as possible. So I get a lot of phone calls from around the country and basically it's two questions. One, how is the real estate market in Tampa? And if they already know what I'm going to answer it, they then ask, how do I navigate it? And two, if I'm going to move to Tampa, where should I move? That's a difficult question. So that's really the goal for the this live feed tonight is to answer those questions plus answer your questions. So in the comments, you guys can go ahead and throw your questions in there, whatever you want. I will try to answer as many as I can, whether it's Tampa Bay related in general or housing related, real estate related, um, whatever you guys want to know. So we're going to start off tonight with talking about the current market. <laughs> so that's definitely the question that I get the most, you know, what's going on in Tampa. So what's going on in Tampa is very similar to what's going on all over the country. Um, we have very low inventory. I talked a lot about this in my last video. And um, when I say low inventory, I mean less than a month of inventory. And what that means is if we were to stop putting houses on the market, how long would it take for buyers to eat up the rest of our inventory and buy our inventory so there was none. And that is less than one month. And as I said in the last video, a balanced market is considered six months. So we are at less than a month. So it's very, very unbalanced. That makes it very difficult for buyers. What we're finding is that regular buyers, responsible buyers, ones that are, you know, putting 20% down and, you know, normally would have no problem getting a home are really struggling right now. You need a lot of cash um, either to cover appraisal gaps or to pay cash for a home um, or else you're struggling and you're, you're putting offers in on a lot of homes. Um, I've had a lot of clients come from out of state. And um, they hear this, but they don't actually understand the reality of it. Um, the reality of it is that it, it's very, very difficult. So I don't want to frust I don't want to you know discourage anybody or anything like that, but I do want people to go into the market if they're looking to buy in the spring and summer with their eyes wide open um, because it is it is challenging. Um, so with that, um, I wanted to go over also um, what you can do if you want to get into the Tampa Bay market. So as always, you want to get your pre-approval. Um, if you are moving from, say, New York, I have a lot of you guys from New York and a lot of you from California. I love talking to both of you. Um, and uh, if you guys want to move, out, move down here to Florida, then talk to a lender if you're planning on getting a loan. Secondly, um, call me or call another real estate agent if you're looking in a different area of Florida. And then know that if you have a house to sell in those states, that it's very, very difficult to offer in the state of Florida with a contingency to sell your house in whatever state. So it's really important to talk to the lender about whether you can actually qualify for two loans. Um, so that is one of the things that everybody needs to uh, pay attention to and ask your lender about. Because if we have to make an offer contingent on the sale of a house, even if it's under contract, it's very difficult to get it accepted. So that's that's one of the first things that I have people do. Um, uh, sorry. Sorry, I distracted with um, some comments. Um, everyone's talking to each other. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's uh, super fun here. This is the first time I've done this, so we might have some uh, some issues. Um, so it looks like a lot of people are coming from New York, and they're very excited about it. That's very true. Um, I have a lot a lot of clients from Long Island specifically, so maybe you guys can chime in and tell me what it is. Um, I have, uh, I mean, multiple ones that are building here, and um, one that I was just on the phone with a, about an hour and a half ago. So. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of Long Island people coming down here. Um, so one of the questions, um, here, when you show homes with a swimming pool in the backyard, what do you usually say they're perfect for? 
Hmm. Swimming. I'm going to go with swimming. <laughs> um, well, uh, swimming pools in your backyard. It's, it's, it's a very Florida thing to have. Most people, when they're coming from out of state, they expect every house to have a swimming pool in the state of Florida. Um, that's not true. Uh, a lot of new construction houses do not have swimming pools. So keep that in mind. If you're coming down here and you're going to be looking for new construction in that 350 to 500 range, most of those builders are not building swimming pools while they build their house. So it would be something that you would have to do after, after construction. When you get in the higher price points and you're with the, the more custom builders, you can get pools built with your home. Um, but that lower price point doesn't typically have an option to build a pool with a home at least through the builder themselves. You might be able to get a loan that will roll it in. Um, but yes, swimming pools in your backyard are for swimming, enjoying the Florida sun and taking lots of pictures with pretty background. Okay. Um, someone wants to hear my thoughts on the Riverview area. Um, that's an area that I get asked about a lot. Um, and it is in the Southeast part of Hillsborough County. So we will go over some maps in a little bit because I wanted, I know on the videos, the maps go pretty quickly. Um, and that is something that I do a lot on Zoom calls with people from out of state is just really take a look at the maps and kind of go over areas so people understand, you know, what each area, um, where it is in in relation to beaches and, and cities and things like that. So we'll do that in a minute. Um, but the Riverview area specifically is, um, is a very fast growing area. It's in the southeast part of Hillsborough County, which is the county that Tampa is located in. It has a lot of housing. It is a housing neighborhood or area city itself. Um, if you're looking for housing prices that are close to the median, which is about 350. Um, there are more options in Riverview than in most cities. There's a lot of new construction going on in Riverview um, and a lot of resales at this point because now there's there's a lot of neighborhoods there. Um, school grades um, tend to fluctuate depending on where you are. So I always recommend that if schools are important to you, that you're looking at that and making sure that you're going to be zoned for a school that you want. Um, and then also, I think the biggest complaint that people have is the um, exits getting on and off in rear view um, whenever it's rush hour traffic. It does get very backed up off of the, the interstate whenever you're getting into Riverview itself. Um, you know, there was a lot of growth very quickly in the southeast portion of Hillsborough County between Riverview, Gibsonton, Apollo Beach now, Ruskin, all of those areas are growing very quickly. So the infrastructure has to follow, um, which can sometimes cause some some pretty bad backups. Um, but I know they're always working on that. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully that's something that, you know, it wasn't too bad last year with COVID and people being at home, but, um, but, you know, hopefully it's something that gets worked out. Um, there's always construction going on in the roads, which is part of the problem. Um, I have a question here from um, RA. Could you please touch on contingency with cash buy? Could this have a better chance? I am VA. Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly. Um, <laughs> Because if you're a VA loan, then you wouldn't be a cash buy. So if you wanted to be a VA loan and waive your appraisal contingency to technically be like a cash buyer, so it's not, you don't have a contingency on financing, um, you would have to talk to the lender. I'm not actually sure if VA loans would allow you to waive the appraisal. I guess I don't see why not, but that would be a question for a lender. Um, as long as they are willing to waive that and you have the cash difference. So Say you go under contract for four hundred thousand, and the appraisal comes in at three sixty. You have to have forty thousand dollars to cover that gap, or else you would lose your deposit. Um, so that is the um, the downside of doing that. We have a lot of appraisal gap um, uh, coverage right now. That's a big, big thing that we're putting in offers to make sure that the seller feels comfortable with the fact that um, a buyer is willing to pay more and appraisals just aren't keeping up. Um, unfortunately, appraisers have to look back a couple months and even a couple months ago, our prices were lower. Um, shout out to uh, Tim Balecki, who's watching in Seoul, Korea. He's a client of mine um, building up here in, uh, or over here in the Tampa Bay area. How are you doing, Tim? 
Um, am I taking new clients? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, in real estate, we're always taking new clients. Um, what I tell people is at this point, I have to um, really work with the people that are active buyers and that are ready, willing, and able to purchase a house. So once they're pre-qualified, um, once they've, they've come, if they're coming from out of state and they've done their tour and everything, and they kind of have an idea of where it is that they want to be. The, the re the reason why is, is not because I don't want to spend a lot of time with people. I, I, I do that all the time. It's because the market is moving so quickly. So if someone isn't ready and they want to see houses for a couple months and not put in offers that, that that's a very difficult thing for me to do. I literally have to run and jump and show houses the second they go on the offer for my active clients um, because inventory is going so quickly. Um, so if someone is looking for more information, I'm happy to have conversations with them about that. I actually do that all the time. So um, <laughs> a pool is stupid expensive. Um, why are VA offers, thank you, Karen. Um, why are VA offers so difficult to get accepted by sellers? You know, that is that is definitely one of the things that I dislike most about our current market. Um, it, it is unfair, um, and that's to, to say it lightly. VA buyers tend to, to use their VA, VA benefits to the full extent of what they're allowed to, which is 100% financing, which they are they have earned and they should get. And everything else. But unfortunately, when a seller is looking at 10 offers and one is 50% down and one is 30% down and one is 20 and yours is 100% financing zero down, the seller will sometimes look at that as if you are not as qualified. So if there's any sellers out there watching, this is my message to you. A VA buyer, even if they are putting or even if they are financing 100% is not a worse buyer than somebody that is putting down more. The difference is, and where sellers get hung up, is that if a VA buyer really truly doesn't have any cash to cover an appraisal gap, then they aren't the best choice because the appraisal gap is really, really a, a big point right now. So we have that happening all over the place. So until the appraisals start catching up with the market, which at this point, the market's kind of running so fast, appraisals can't keep up with them. But that's really the struggle. Um, sometimes you'll find sellers that are just sympathetic and want to sell their house to a VA buyer. Um, VA loans are not harder to get done. In fact, they're some of the easiest to get done. There's a long um, standing you know, feeling towards VA loans as if they're they're harder because they have a, a separate inspection um, that the appraiser has to do. And it used to be that way. Um, they used to be more difficult to, to get to the closing table. I personally do not find them to be difficult um, at all. So if a seller, you know, if a buyer is qualified and a seller is willing to, please take a look at you know VA buyers in general and understand that that they're using their benefits that they've earned. Um, Approximate monthly cost for pool service. Um, it depends on size of pool and what you want done. So I would say typically between $60 and $150. If you have an outdoor pool with no screen and an oak tree over your pool, it's going to be more expensive because they're going to be digging leaves and acorns out of it all the time. But um, but no, it's about $60 to $150. Saltwater pools are typically easier to maintain. Um, it's basically just adding salt when it needs it and the salt uh, chlorinator um, the salt chlorinator turns it into a chlorine like substance, um, to keep the pool clean and it's easier or it's better for your hair and your skin. It doesn't dry it out quite as much. Um, is Wesley Chapel reasonable for a McDill commute? I'm planning on moving in the fall. Hang on real quick. So I have a lot of, uh, Wesley Chapel buyers who have to commute to McDill. So it's about, 45 to 50 minutes, depending on when you're driving. So the actual distance is pretty far. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, maybe 25 to 30 miles, depending on where you are in Wesley Chapel, Wesley Chapel, and I'll go over a map in a second, is pretty big in general. So if you're farther north, then it can take longer to get there. Um, but I, there are a lot of uh, people that have to commute to McDill that live in Wesley Chapel. 
if you are going in and off hours. So if you have to be there by say before 7 a.m. and you're leaving prior to four o'clock, you'll definitely be better off. It's it's just basically the distance that it takes to get from Wesley Chapel to McDill. Um, not necessarily uh, you know, any traffic or anything like that. You do hit traffic in Wesley Chapel when you're getting off the interstate, just like in Riverview. Um, but it, they're very similar. The The benefit when talking to McDill workers between Riverview and Wesley Chapel is the uh, Crosstown Expressway. So the Crosstown Expressway runs uh, through downtown Tampa and kind of swings around to the southeast part of um of Hillsborough County. It's a very fast road. It's my favorite road in Hillsborough County. There's very rarely any traffic on it. So you can get from one place to, to the next pretty quick. It is a toll road. It is not ridiculously expensive, but it is a toll road. They have a flyover lane that depending on what hours of the day is either going um, south or north. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a road that runs very quickly. So a lot of people that work at McDill can hop on that and do, you know, the, the bulk of the drive, uh, through the city on that road. And then they just get on 75 to get the, to do the rest of it. Wesley Chapel's a little bit farther. It's North. Um, Wesley Chapel in general is a, is a bit more expensive, I find. Um, so that might be prohibitive depending on what your price point is. Um, ah, hi, Tito. Um, that's the, that Tito is who does my hair. <laughs> so he's been doing my hair forever. Um, so thank you. He keeps it looking good. Um, okay. Question. If you're new to the area, how do you find quality contractors like painters, landscaping, pool guy, bug guy services like that? Gosh, I need a new long guy. Anybody have any recommendations? <laughs> um, so uh, in all honesty, it is very difficult. Um, there are a lot of times where I hesitate to recommend people that I, I know and I use just because I'm not entirely satisfied with them. Um, a lot of times when it comes to lawn service, I typically will tell people, especially if it's in a neighborhood, is to drive around and see whose lawn looks good and ring the doorbell and find out who does their lawn. One thing that people don't know in the state of Florida, whenever you're dealing with lawn service, is you need not only somebody to cut the lawn and, uh, you know, edge and trim and things like that, but you also need somebody to deal with um, pest control in the lawn. So sometimes your house pest control company can do both of those, um, but a lot of times it's a separate company. So that you need a lawn pest company and a house pest company and someone to mow your lawn unless you do it yourself. Um, so sometimes, uh, there's also, uh, social media groups, depending on where you're living, if you're living or if you're living in a neighborhood, there tends to be social media groups, throwing a question like that out there. will get you tons of recommendations, um, on things like that. Pool services, Tucker's here, pool services, lawn services, all of those things are very common, um, in the state of Florida. They're, they're very prevalent. So I would say shop around and make sure that you're, you're getting, um, a service that you like. Um, apparently Tucker heard something outside. <laughs> um, okay. So I am going to touch on this, um, for a second and, and just tell you guys, um, that what is happening. So, um, I know this is a larger and difficult environmental question. Um, but coming from California, I'm a bit freaked out now that I've learned about Florida's phosphate, um, piles. Is this a big issue? Um, so I will tell you, I've never thought about it until this past week. Um, and is it a big issue? It, it is a big issue for, for the people that are down in Manatee County, which is about an hour South of here. Um, hang on, let me see if I can get him to stop barking. Um, so, I don't know enough about it to really comment on it. Um, I know that all hands are on deck to stop it. Um, and hopefully they do because we don't really want to have any um, major environmental spills into uh, the Bay um, or the Gulf of Mexico. So stay tuned on that. Uh, I did want to, even though I don't really have things to say about that, I did want to mention it because I'm very concerned about it too. Um, Nikki would like to know where is Tito, the hair guy? She needs a hair guy too. Um, unique hair on, um, is it Hillsborough Avenue? Um, looking to buy a condo next year. What area in Tampa has nice condo buildings at a reasonable price? 
Um, okay. So let's talk about condos for a little bit because they're becoming more prevalent here, especially luxury condos. We did not have a very big luxury condo market in the Tampa Bay area for a while. And now we're getting a whole bunch of new buildings. Um, she asked specifically, specifically about a good price. So when you're thinking about condos, you can find them all over. Um, but the, the, biggest density of condos tends to be either closer to a city or closer to the beaches. Um, so downtown St. Pete has a decent amount of condos, even mid-level smaller condos um, that are a little bit more affordable. You know, even at, there's some older condo buildings uh, in St. Pete that are, you know, just three or four floors, concrete buildings that are reasonably affordable. Um, and then when you go to the beaches, the beaches are trying to get as many people and as many houses in as they possibly can. So there are a lot of condo. In fact, most of the housing on the beaches is condos. Um, so it kind of depends on where you want to be. Luxury condo building is happening mostly um, in downtown St. Pete and in uh, downtown Tampa. So we have several that are happening on Bayshore Boulevard um, that are in the process of being built or taking reservations. Um, Hyde Park House, um, Altura, uh, Saltaire in St. Pete, um, and the addition in downtown Tampa are three, um, that are top of mind right now. Um, the addition will be affiliated with the addition hotel, which is our first five-star hotel in, uh, Tampa. So we're very excited about that. That's part of water street in downtown Tampa, um, which is over 50 acres of development in prime downtown real estate. It is very unique to have that option. Um, Okay someone's here. Um, okay. So, all right. Suggestions for best location neighborhoods to Airbnb for first research trip. I will have a car just wondering where, where to position ourselves. Um, okay. So Airbnbs, if you're coming to visit, um, the Airbnb website will tell you where there's those options. So keep in mind that nicer neighborhoods, you know, with fancier houses in the suburbs, their HOAs are not going to allow for Airbnbs. So um, you usually are going to find those in areas like the beaches. Um, Seminole Heights has a decent amount of Airbnbs, which is over in Tampa, Riverside Heights, the areas that are part of the city that are not necessarily, um, you know, in communities and things like that. Um, it's, it can be kind of difficult to find them. Honestly, I don't look at the website very often, so I'm not really sure that's just going based on what I have clients, um, uh, clients, uh, tell me. So Don just asked, can you go over the appraisal gap again? How long do you think the appraisals will catch up with the market? When do you think things will slow down? Hang on. I'm gonna have a drink. This real estate market is driving me to drink. <laughs> Uh, when do I think things will slow down? Um, I don't know. I really wish I knew the answer to that. So what I know is that typically after April or after Easter, that's when the tours tend to go home. This is normal years. They tend to go home and we start our, our spring summer buying season. So anybody who is moving jobs that have to, that has to relocate during the summer for the start of school. Keep in mind that schools in this area start in early to mid August. So August 10th, 12th, 13th, those are all common days for our schools to start here. So people relocating and need to be here before school start really need to be here by July. So that means they need to be house hunting now to find a house, to put it under contract, to get your loan and to close. Um, and the reason being that you would normally, you would normally not have to do it in April. You could come in May and do it is that there's just not a lot of inventory. So you, you can spin your wheels for a little bit and, and make a bunch of offers and not have any of them accepted. So I am recommending to people who need to move to the summer to really, really start, uh, looking now, even if you have to buy it in May or early June, you know, do that. You're going to be much better off. Um, so with spring, summer typically being our biggest buying and selling season, if we do not have more resales going on the market, so starting now, and this is typically the time that people in communities would be listing their house. So their logic is, well, school's over at the end of May. So I'm going to list my house at the beginning of April, get a contract on it and close right after school starts. 
perfectly normal logic. We've been doing it for years. So we're hoping to have more inventory on the market with that logic. The problem is, is there's not a lot of people that are moving in general. So where we would maybe have a couple in our pipeline, we don't have any. Partly because people that already own a house in Florida don't have anywhere to go. So if they're struggling to find a house to buy, then they can't sell their house. It's like a vicious circle that we're dealing with right now. Um, so until people can find a house to buy or, or if they move out of state or some other reason that they're willing to sell their house, we have to have inventory go up. I am genuinely concerned about my summer buyers and how I'm going to find houses for them to buy um, for the summer. So a lot of people got the notes and came earlier and we put them under contract a couple months ago. And I have a lot of closings in April and May because of that. Um, and uh, so as far as how long is it going to last, it depends on, on supply. So we have a huge hole to get out of here right now with our supply. We have less than a month of supply. So until our supply catches up with our demand and it balances out a little bit, it's not going to end. Um, you know, what will it take for that to happen? Whether it's rising interest rates, whether it's just people saying, you know what, forget it, I'm going to catch it or I'm going to cash in on this market and sell my house and go rent something. Um, you know, that's definitely happening. There's some people that are kicking those tires. Um, or if it's, you know, something uh, just in the general economy. Um, people like to talk about real estate bubbles. I hear it a hundred times a day, the real estate bubble, what's going to happen if it pops, things like that. And I guess my alternative to it popping is, you know, what if things just kind of balance out? Um, and, and I don't want to be naive and I don't want, you know, to seem like I'm a, a person that thinks things can continue to go up inevitably, you know, forever. And we're never going to have a balance. I, I obviously know that that's not true. At some point, things will will shift. But what everyone's afraid of, which is what happened in 2008, which here in Tampa, we really started seeing the downturn in 2006. Um, there's other alternatives to a massive collapse of the real estate market, which was very unusual back then and had a, a ton of circumstances that contributed to it. So most of the time when the housing market goes down or the housing market is you know, adjusting, it doesn't necessarily crash. Um, I am worried for some of my buyers that are that are paying a, a lot now, but they're doing so knowing that this market might not happen forever. Um, I'm not seeing a lack of people wanting to move here. Um, so as long as people from other states are moving here and as long as uh, the economy is um, uh, an environment that is that people aren't losing their jobs, then um, and uh, builders can't keep up. So we know that that's happening. Um, then I don't really see it ending. But again, I don't want to sound naive. I know things have to come to an end. I just don't see it yet. The second I see it, I will let you guys all know. Um, okay. How much of the lack of inventory is caused by COVID protection where banks can't start foreclosures for the last year? Do you think there's a lot of just terms not for sale? Well, I guess, you know, I would say, what's to say that they're going to be foreclosed on? So why can't they just sell their house? In this market, most people have equity in their house unless they bought it very recently. Um, which which doesn't make sense, or they took out some crazy, you know, loan, um, second mortgage, or something like that. So most people, if they're in distress, they could sell their house. And frankly, we need the inventory, and we want the inventory. Um, so I would propose that as an alternative. Um, and the other thing would be, banks are going to be motivated to work with buyers who are underwater because of COVID. They are not this again. It's not 2008 again. We're not dealing with banks that have to just you know, get rid of all of this bad uh, this bad debt on their on their um, books and foreclose on people. These are as long as they're employed and they can pay, they will work with the the owner of the house. That's my hope. So we don't end up with another 2008. I think everybody that has the power to control that is going to be working in that direction. I don't see how collapsing the housing market would be beneficial to any of us at this point. Um, so 
that is, uh, that's that. <laughs> and I know we could talk about that all day long. Um, so Grand Junction guy, what is your favorite suburb type area? Like Oldsmar, Brandon, Lutz, et cetera. Um, it's Lutz, by the way, everyone out there who thinks it's Lutz, it's Lutz. Um, I'm flying down in two weeks to look. Um, so I get that question all the time. So let's go to maps because, um, I, I'm absolutely going insane with my dog, uh, uh, <laughs> barking. So, so I'm going to go over to maps. I'm going to share my screen for a bit. And, uh, cause I want to show you guys all a, um, a, a map of the area. So let's see, let's go here. So we're going to share the Google map. Okay. I can't really tell if we're, if we're sharing. Um, so anyway, if, if hopefully we're sharing, um, so this particular, what I have outlined here is actually the borders of Pinellas County. So let me go through this a little bit. So when I talk about the Tampa Bay area, the areas that I typically work in are three counties, Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, and Pasco County. Let's talk about Pinellas County first. Pinellas County is the little thumb that sticks down. You have Tampa Bay here and the Gulf of Mexico over here. This is the county with all of our beaches. So this entire area all through here, all of these uh, coastal islands are our beaches. So all the way from uh, St. Pete Beach to Clearwater, all the way up here to some of our parks. Within Pinellas County itself, there are a couple areas that I will point out. So downtown St. Pete is right over here. So keep in mind that downtown St. Pete is not on the beach side. St. Pete Beach is here. Downtown St. Pete is here. So the cities that we talk about are downtown Tampa, downtown St. Pete. Tampa's here. St. Pete's here. If you live in South Tampa, which is here, they're really quick drives over the, over the water. So also within Pinellas County, you have Clearwater, which you have Clearwater Beach, and then you have Clearwater Mainland. Um, and then you have Safety Harbor in Dunedin, which I get asked about all the time. So Safety Harbor is a really cute uh, community that's on the bay side. Um, really nice parks here, this is Philippi Park up here. And uh, they have a, a really nice main street as does Dunedin. So Dunedin has been around for a long time. They have a great main street. Um, so when you're looking for, you know, more of a quaint little city, um, Dunedin and Safety Harbor are nice because they do have a lot of great restaurants and shops and things like that. And one of the things that most people don't know about Dunedin is, is a sister city to Scotland. So they have a lot of um, Scottish themed stores there which is interesting. Um, and then up here, um, Palm Harbor is a really nice area. There's some great schools in Palm Harbor if you're specifically looking for schools. And then Tarpon Springs is the north part of Pinellas County. And that is where the sponge docks are. So um, there is uh, the sponges like that you find in an ocean. So very interesting uh, area. And let me go to Hillsborough County here. Oops. Let's try that again. Okay, now I can't find my thing. There we go. Yes, we picked this night to be as barky as possible for Tucker. All right, so Hillsborough County is um, just east of Pinellas County, basically right here that they, they kind of share the same Northern border. As you can see, Hillsborough County is a massive County with a lot of square footage. Um, I always say it looks like a square with a bite taken out. Um, so in Hillsborough County, there are a million things that we can talk about. Um, you have South Tampa, which is this area here. Um, then you have, let me scroll in a little bit. Um, this is downtown Tampa with Davis Islands and Harbor Island. Up here is Ybor City, Seminole Heights are up this way. Um, and then over here, you start getting into the suburbs. So um, we have, if you go up Dale Mabry, this is Carrollwood and Northdale. 
Over here is the West Chase area, which is a nice large area. Um, it's one of the most popular zip codes and has been for a long time. Most uh, or for the reason that it's very accessible to all of these main roads and downtown Tampa. So 589 is the Veterans Expressway, and that is a toll road, but it's a very nicely moving toll road um, and takes you all the way from the West Shore area, which is a big business district, the airport, which is right here, um, all the way up to West Chase. And then as you go farther, you get into the Lutes and Odessa area and then into Pasco County. Um, and then the Riverview area is down here. So we have Brandon, Riverview, Apollo Beach, Ruskin, Sun City, and then Waimama, which is growing a lot um, all the way. And then to the east, these areas are growing as well. So Sefner, Dover, Plant City. The Nona Sasa, if anyone follows me on Instagram, I did have a post, um, I think about two weeks ago from a new build that I have going on at the Nona Sasa. It is um, an area that is a little bit more rural looking, as you can see just from the map, there's a lot of green on there. Um, but uh, there is some new construction there, but it, there is not a ton in that particular neighborhood is uh, sold out at this point. So going a little bit north, uh, New Tampa is an area that I show in a lot. Um, it's a nice suburb. It's just south of Wesley Chapel, which is just on the other side of the Pasco County border. So New Tampa, um, which is anchored by Tampa Palms, that's a neighborhood, um, is this kind, of, this kind of whole area. So it's a little bit farther south um, from Wesley Chapel. The houses are a little bit more expensive here. And then Lutz is kind of the center part here. Um, and one thing I like about Lutz is that it, it is um, a little bit more quaint. It's the neighborhoods are not quite as big. Um, there's a lot of uh, really nice tree growth there. Um, it's just really pretty little area if you're okay with being that far north. Um, Cheval is a nice neighborhood. Um, so then the last county I will go through is Pasco County, which I feel like I'm at more than any county. So you'll see Pasco County is a kind of a big rectangle. So I will be completely honest with you. Typically I am here. I am just in this particular area. This is a lot of vacant land through here. So it's not really something that, that I have to go to. I don't go to Zephyr Hills very often, but Wesley Chapel, Land O'Lakes, Odessa. These are three really, really hot cities. There's a lot of new construction going on in State Road 54. Um, and then going into State Road 56 here and then up here on State Road 54 as it loops around here. Um, Epperson, I get asked about Epperson a lot. That community is up here off of State Road 54 to the north part of Wesley Chapel. Um, that's the Lagoon community. I do have um, several buyers that have bought in there and are currently buying in there. Um, Land O'Lakes, um, it's it just a little bit more central. And then you have Odessa over here. So, uh, buyers that are buying that watch the, the, um, video that I did about four new home construction communities in Odessa, um, Starkey Ranch is the number one selling community right now in our area, which is over here. And then you have, um, Astoria and the preserve and Bexley. All of those are new construction communities that I am in all the time. So that's kind of the breakdown of the counties themselves. So whenever I'm talking about them, um, it's a little bit easier for, you know, hopefully that, that helped because, um, that's a lot of the questions that, that I get are, you know, where, um, uh, ranching in West Chase right now, um, easy access to all three of those counties. Yeah. So Thank you for that, David. Um, West Chase, one of the appeals to West Chase is because of its proximity, not only to it's in Hillsborough County, but it's very close to Pinellas County. It's basically right there. Um, and then Pasco County is very easy to get to. You can either take the Veterans North or Gun Highway, which brings you up to Pasco County. So if you're looking for um, somewhere central that's more suburban, that's a good place too. Uh, I don't work in my mama very often. Honestly, it's just not an area I get asked about um, very much, but everything is changing and everything is growing. And the new, the new home um, builders are trying to find land um, and areas like why mama are areas that have land. So if you look at it from a builder's perspective, they're trying to find as much land as they can to build neighborhoods and houses for as inexpensive as they can. So that brings them to some of those areas of, um, of town that are less developed. So, and then the prices are lower because the land is less expensive. 
which makes sense. So why mama is not necessarily a place that I go to very often, but I'm sure that will change one area um, that I'll talk about specifically that I never really went to very often before is Palmetto and parish. I touched on Palmetto a little bit when I was talking about the manatee water breach. Um, but the, uh, uh, thanks Don, um, the, um, Palmetto and parish are technically in Manatee County and they're in between Sarasota and Tampa area. So South of Apollo beach, that area. And there's a tremendous amount of development going on there, but what, where it's, what people are liking about those areas is the fact that they have very quick access to St. Pete and the beaches. So not only are they fairly close to the beaches in Bradenton, but you can hop on 275, go over the Skyway Bridge, which is a gorgeous drive in general. So, you know, that's, you know, why wouldn't you want to do that and get to either downtown St. Pete or the beaches in Hillsborough County, or you can go to the beaches in Manatee County, which are beautiful. If you've never been to Anna Maria Island um, or Longboat Key, I highly recommend that you go there or even to Sarasota itself. So that area has affordable housing, a lot of new construction housing. Um, so that area I never really had to go to before. And in the last two years, I've had to go to a lot more. So um, that's definitely um, um, only thing. Yeah, I remember why mama being barely developed. Well, I mean, it's, it's probably not far off from there <laughs> still. But um, uh, yes, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, where did Jennifer go? She's here. Yes, I know. I, I know the dog. He was being. Um, so do the multi-million dollar homes on the coast not have to worry about hurricanes and flooding? Are they built with better pr products to protect against storm surge and wind? That's an amazing question. I, I would love to talk about that. So obviously it depends on where it was built or when it was built. Sorry. Um, if you're on the beach and even if it's an older home, typically they have been built up at least one story. Um, so your first story is technically garage space and um, uninsurable space. So you don't necessarily you know, want to put anything valuable down there because it's not necessarily going to be insured if water were to come in. Um, new homes that have been built, everything has to be done to the newest construction code. So one of the things that we've found over the last 10 years, really, it should have been longer than that, but we weren't building anything between 2008 and 2012, really. Um, our hurricane impact windows are um, pretty standard in any sort of luxury build e e on the beach, even as you go into South Tampa and places like that, you're expecting hurricane impact windows, which are expensive when they're, when they're um, uh, at any time, whether you're under construction or post construction, but it's one of those things that's, it's almost a no brainer. So when people are buying on the beach, you, you have, um, all the construction code to withstand not a hurricane five or no, not a cat five or anything like that, but they're, they're built as strong as they can possibly be built with the materials that they're using. So your roofs are strapped in through um, the, the concrete block. Um, a lot of the houses are built with all concrete block on all floors. Some of them are built with wood frame. That's not necessarily less sturdy, um, but uh, so people think of it as, um, but that's not necessarily true. And a builder would be able to explain why. Um, but as long as you have impact windows and your house is built up, so it has to be built up. So if water comes, you're not getting water into the insurable parts of the house. Um, so whenever you're watching the news from around the country and you see a hurricane come through and you see all these houses that are, you know, floating away, it's, it's absolutely terrible. Um, we feel very fortunate in the Tampa Bay area to have not had to deal with that in a while. I am knocking on wood. Um, and it's those typically are houses that are older. So, you know, new houses should be able to withstand a fairly strong hurricane. Um, but most of the damage that's done is, is from flooding and water. So if your house is built up, hopefully the surge doesn't go that high to actually get into that second level. Um, that's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Looking for a good school pool, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I talk about schools. I talked about 
I don't remember what video it was, but I talked about schools a little bit. It's a hard thing for us real estate agents to talk about because we can't ethically, we can't really talk about what schools are good or bad or anything like that. Um, so I typically will refer people back to either the Florida State grades of schools or there is an education guide, which I normally have sitting around here. I don't see it right now. Um, an education guide uh, that that I linked in one of the last videos. I think it was the last frequently asked questions video. That's what it was. Um, and the education guide basically gives those student, those school grades. Now the school grades that the state of Florida is reporting are from standardized testing. So we don't have school grades from 2020 because of COVID. We do. So the last grades that we have are from 2019. Now, what I will tell you as a parent who has had three kids go through the Hillsborough County school system, um, the school grades tend to correlate with the schools that most people rate as higher than others read into that, whatever you want. Um, and just touching on one thing when it comes to really great schools, I, it's by far the thing that people ask for safe neighborhoods, good schools. People ask for that. I totally understand why. Um, I did an, I did a video called safe neighborhoods to try to give people tools so they could look those things up. Just be aware that if you're looking for a house with the best school districts in town, those neighborhoods tend to be higher than our median price. What I find very challenging is if someone says, I want to be in the best school district, but my price point is under 300. It's unfortunately because everybody wants to be in the good school districts, the prices there tend to be a little bit higher. That doesn't mean that where you can, where you can afford a house, the schools are going to be terrible. It just means that you might have to look into other opportunities. So maybe townhouses or, you know, a house with a little less square footage to get into that school zone um, because they do tend to drive up the prices if the schools are considered really good. I'll try. Yeah. Ontario. Yeah. Hi, Canada. Um, the Canadians love the Tampa Bay area. Um, I think it's because of the same reason that we get a lot of people here from the Midwest. So I was always taught that um, from the Northeast, I-95 runs straight down to the East Coast of Florida and, and I-75 runs right down to the West Coast of Florida. So I'm not sure if that's why everyone comes here. Now we're coming, now everyone's coming from around the country. Um, and, uh, but that's a, uh, I just totally lost my train of thought. There we go. I was reading uh, Don. Don's video about 55 and up communities. Um, is there any advantage to build rather than buy resale? Um, yeah, it's honestly a, a good portion of my buyers are buying new um, because they can get a house and resale. There's so much competition. Unless you're a cash buyer, um, there's a lot of competitions for resale homes. Um, so a lot of times it is easier actually to get a house under contract if it's a new build because builders are not the same as sellers, you know, in, in general, they don't look at a VA offer and say, Oh no, I'm not going to sell to them. Um, because the next person might walk in the door. That's not a VA. That's just not how they work. They're used to loans. They know how they work. They know that their in-house lenders can get things done as long as they're pre-approved. Um, so the answer is yes, it is easier. And, uh, you know, but if you're a cash buyer and you like a resale than a resale, um, um, can definitely uh, um, be possibility. Okay, so Daryl Burke asked, what is the estimate time frame for building an 8,000 square foot home in South Tampa? Um, over a year, I would say over a year, definitely over a year, probably a year to 18 months. Um, so let's talk about South Tampa a little bit. That is actually where I live. Um, I've lived in a couple different areas here in the Tampa Bay area. South Tampa, um, I love most of the time. Um, and then sometimes it's not all that great. The roads and traffic tend to be a little uh, tough sometimes, but, um, South Tampa is definitely one of the most expensive areas to build in because the land is very expensive. So depending on where you are in South Tampa, the land costs are going to vary. Um, the plant high district, if you're shopping anywhere in South Tampa, you will hear it over and over and over again, the plant high district, I need to buy in the plant high district. Um, that's because plant high school is, is rated one of the highest high rating has one of the highest ratings in the county. So a lot of people like to be here. It's also very close to downtown Tampa. We have Bayshore Boulevard, we have Hyde Park, and we have access to um, all of the major highways. So um, that's really why South Tampa is, is as appealing as it is. I did a video on South Tampa 
um, about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and it's, it is a great place to live. So the way South Tampa, it looks is often surprising to people. It is not a, um, manicured neighborhood where all of these, you know, multi-million dollar houses are in perfect neighborhoods on perfect streets. In fact, a lot of the streets are, are, you know, bumpy, don't have curbs. Um, it's a city suburb. So it's just outside of downtown Tampa. South Tampa was developed a long time ago and you have a lot of older homes here. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with those homes or the people in those homes. It just means that they're older. And there's not a lot of vacant land. So what will happen in South Tampa is if you are somebody who wants to build a new construction home, you um, or the builder finds a lot, they tear down the old house um, and then they build the new one. And typically that new house is much, much bigger than the house that they tore down. So on, it's not unusual in South Tampa to be on a street and pay you know, $1.8 million for a house and have a very small house next door. It's very common exactly what my street looks like. Doesn't bother me at all. The land value is here in South Tampa. So to find a lot in South Tampa with a house that you can tear down and build, it's really getting hard in the Plant High District to find one that's in the 300s. So a lot of times they're pushing that 400,000 mark, um, which is a lot of money to spend just on the land. So, um, so if you want to build in South Tampa, a lot of what the builders are doing here now is they're not listing until after they've already started their build. So they're picking out everything. They're, you know, doing the floor plan. They're picking it out. They're starting the build and then they're selling it kind of as a spec home. Um, they do that for a couple of reasons. One, it's easier for them to get the houses built. They're not dealing with a customer, you know, going in there, you know, picking out things, changing their mind a hundred times and, and everything else. They can pick everything out. They use designers. They, it's beautiful. And they, they build the house and sell it and move on. And most of the time they do a really great job. So people don't complain. If you do have a custom builder, which there are still plenty out there, um, then the process takes a little bit longer. So it's funny because houses will pop up, you know, new construction houses will pop up and they'll be done in four months because they've already started. So that's, that's the good news for anybody looking for new construction in South Tampa. Just keep looking because they will pop up. Um, that's if you don't want to build from, from scratch. Um, why are so many other builders building? I'm still waiting for permits long overdue from home. Yeah. I, I mean, between COVID delays, you know, within cities and counties and getting inspectors out supply delays, um, subcontractor, uh, hiring issues, you know, just finding people to do the work. I don't know about anybody else that lives in Tampa, but I personally wanted a patio extension and a landscaping, um, re redone in my house. And it took me like six months to get it. The city of Tampa to get that permit took forever. Um, so the builders really know how to navigate that best. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, between <laughs> all of the things that are getting in the way. And that's really why, you know, builders, are kind of taking that that customer piece out of buildings because they can just push everything through. They can design the house, they can have it permitted, and they're not dealing with you know clients saying, "Oh, I want to move this, I want to move that." They just are getting it pushed through permitting. Um, I know I, I have a lot of uh, builder contacts, and uh, everything has gone up in costs um, this year. Not only the city, you know, city impact fees and things like that, but building costs, lumber has gone up, um, especially lumber, everything. So um, that's the other thing is a builder doesn't necessarily want to quote you a price to build a house when they don't actually know what it's going to cost to build at this point because they're not ordering those supplies yet. So by specking a house and starting the build, they can know how much it's actually costing them before they sell it so they can sell it for a price that makes sense for them. Um, Locals think uh, Wesley Chapel. Yeah. So Leon, yeah, that's, that's true. We are, everybody is, um, is a product of where they come from. So here in the Tampa Bay area, people complain about the traffic. I know that when I've had clients come here from other cities, they do not complain about the traffic. Uh, I have some clients that commuted two hours each way for work, which is just insane to me. I can't imagine doing that. Um, but uh, they did. So <laughs> And now they come here and they commute for 45 minutes and they're, 
their life is is immeasurably better because they're not spending all day in their car. Um, so yes, everything is relative to what you're used to. Um, it's more of the exits and you know getting off the exits in Wesley Chapel and Riverview. Those those high density suburban areas just just struggle a little bit with that. Um, yeah, yeah, and DC traffic. Um, Hey, Tim. Um, yeah, I owe you answer to that question. Thank you for asking that. What new construction communities have a casita granny, granny or grandpa flat? Um, that's a tough one. So I would say I can't think of any new construction communities off the top of my head that have those. There are some existing communities that have them. Um, the West Chase area has two areas that have um, two neighborhoods that have a decent amount of granny flat houses. Um, West Chase does in West Park Village um, and then Highland Park in um, the West Chase area just outside of West Chase has um, granny flat houses. So those houses, the granny flats tend to be on top of the garage. So there are stairs to navigate. So if somebody's looking for, um, you know, more of a casita that's on the same level, that's difficult to find in the suburbs because the lots are so small. So you don't have a lot of land to build, you know, a house and then another house. Um, it's also not allowed on a lot of the lots. Um, areas like older areas that have older types of homes like Seminole Heights, they have a lot of main houses and smaller houses in the back. But those neighborhoods tend to have you know kind of small houses in general. So it depends on the size. Um, I know for you, we were um, you know, you wanted space and things like that. If you buy a piece of land in an area like the Nonasasa, you would be able to build something like that on there. Um, and looking in those neighborhoods to try to find what we would have termed in the um, in the RMLS as a second owner suite or a mother-in-law suite, um, that would be a search that that we could do. There is a Lennar floor plan. Um, and I'm not sure where they're building it now. It used to be down in the Southeast. That was a fantastic multi-generational floor plan. If anybody out there is from Lennar, throw me that name, um, of that floor plan. Cause I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, and then DR Horton has a floor plan with a side entry bedroom. Um, I believe I forget the name of that. It starts with a C. Um, but again, that's a little bit smaller of a house and that's going to be in a pretty high density neighborhood. And I'm not, and I don't think that's what you were looking for. So, so finding those things for multi-generational living are, are still hard because everyone's just trying to build as many houses as they can. That's more of a custom thing. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, how bad is tornadoes and hurricanes in Tampa? Um, so tornadoes, uh, a lot of the tornadoes that are here are not, they're not large torna tornadoes. If you're actually looking at the number of tornadoes, we have lots of them. A lot of them are water spouts, um, and in the water. And a lot of them are very small tornadoes that don't, you know, they're, they're not like the tornadoes you see in the, in the middle of the country or anything like that. Um, and hurricanes, uh, you know, we never know from one year or not. Um, what, we don't sit here and, you know, fret about hurricanes very often. Obviously, it's something that's always on our radar. The hurricane season runs from June 1st through November 30th. So it's six months of the year that we have to be on guard and ready in case a hurricane develops. Um, you typically have a lot of notice for a hurricane. Um, it's weeks that you're watching a hurricane kind of jog through the Atlantic and curve up and everything else um, or come into the Gulf. Uh, the tracks change all the time. So, you know, everyone keeps an eye on it. We obviously take it seriously. We live in Florida. We have to take it seriously. So, but anyone on the Atlantic coast or anyone on the Gulf coast, Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, all those places have to take it seriously. So, you know, we always tell people to prepare early, you know, buy the supplies that you're going to need because everything runs out, uh, water runs out, generators run out, all of those things. And um, if there's actually a storm coming, but most new construction homes are built with current construction code. So, and also keep in mind that most new construction homes are being built in areas that are not necessarily in flood zones. So the land that's available for these big neighborhoods to go in is in Odessa and Land Lakes and Wesley Chapel. And those are typically not flood areas. So you're far enough away from the coast that you're not required to have flood insurance. They also build the houses, you know, 
you know, make the neighborhoods, uh, they take the fill from retention ponds and use that to build up the neighborhoods. So if you have a one story house, it's a block house 90% of the time, you have your roof strapped into the block with concrete. Um, and you will typically be given hurricane shutters of some sort, depending on the neighborhood. Now, not all neighborhoods are required to have hurricane shutters provided um, because they're not in wind zones. It totally depends on the neighborhood. So check out or check that out. Um, or you will have impact windows depending on your price point, things like that. So what I like to remind people of is it's not hurricanes and tornadoes that are necessarily the most, the biggest nuisance that we deal with here. Cause again, those don't, they don't happen very often in the summer. The summer storms that happen almost daily are, are much more part of our everyday life than a hurricane or a tornado. And those storms can sometimes, you know, create tornadoes. I'm not a meteorologist. I'm doing my best here. So, um, <laughs> but the summer storms will create a lot of rain in a very short period of time. It's, crazy how fast the rain will fall. Um, so it does cause localized flooding, especially in city areas. Um, and uh, South Tampa is one of those areas. And when I say localized flooding, I, I don't mean that water's pouring into everybody's houses. I mean that water is, is uh, collecting on the streets, typically, a lot of times in intersections. And the reason it does that is it just takes a while to drain. The rain is coming down so fast, the drains can't keep up. So it sits on the road and then it drains out. You do have to be very careful whenever you're driving through South Tampa, if you happen to be driving during one of those storms can be blinding. Um, so on a day-to-day -day basis, that's really a bigger concern for us than, than, you know, a hurricane or tornado, which obviously is always a concern, but it's most of the time we're dealing with, um, the everyday storms. Um, most people in Indiana have water softeners. Do I need a softener or water filtration system in Florida? I love that question. Yes, you do. Um, it's a conversation I have all the time with buyers uh, our water is very hard here. There's a lot of chemicals in it. It will um, make your skin very dry and your hair very dry, and it will uh, create a lot of calcium buildup on your uh, fixtures and your plumbing fixtures. So um, yes, I always recommend a water softener or some sort of water filtration system here. I just got one last year and it helped my hair very, very much. Um, I currently live in Seminole in Pinellas County, moved here four years ago from upstate New York. Love it here. Consider Seminole great schools, great area all around. I call it my little bubble. Yes. Thank you, Susan. That that's very true. I love Seminole as well. It's, it's an area that I think gets overlooked a lot, um, but it does have uh, highly rated schools, um, some nice houses. You have a, a, a wide range of price points there. It's very close to the water. Um, great restaurants over there too. So thank you for that. Um, sinkholes. That's something that we get to talk about all the time too. Um, I'm not a scientist, so I can't really speak too much about sinkholes. I've talked about this in multiple videos. Yes, sinkholes happen. Sinkholes happen all over the country. Florida is basically a bed of limestone, so there is going to be voids. Um, but it is not really something that we sit and stress about all the time. There are areas that are more sinkhole prone than other areas. I highly recommend you take a look at the maps. A lot of those areas are in Pasco County in the, um, the, uh, center part. Someone here says Sefner has sinkholes. Um, yeah, I mean, there's most of the time they're small ones, um, and they can be repaired. It's very difficult if you find a house for sale that has a sinkhole remediation, um, it's difficult because that house is probably very sturdy. It has concrete under it. Um, but yet it's always going to have, uh, a black eye on it. It's always going to be more difficult to sell because you have to disclose that every time you sell it. So, um, I, uh, I tell people to just make sure if you're going to buy one of those houses that you're getting it for a good price or, um, that you plan on staying for a very long time. Um, what is somewhat reasonable area to rent a house, preferably with a pool that's close to the beach in Tampa budget is up to 5k. Um, that's a good question. Rentals are equally hard to find right now um, as buying houses. Uh, I get asked about rentals a lot. I don't do rentals. Um, and that's not because I don't want to help people out that are renting because I completely understand why people want to come here and rent for a while. The issue is that I actually don't really have access to a lot of the rentals because it's so easy to rent um, houses to people. A lot of those companies, the big companies that own a lot of the houses don't even advertise on our MLS. So if I pull up rentals for somebody, I might be missing half 
to, you know, two thirds of the actual rental listings. Um, so I always tell people to do other searches on other third party websites, um, because you're going to have more options there. They, they don't need us. So they don't want to pay us. So they don't advertise on our platform. Um, so finding rentals is very difficult. A lot of people have to end up in apartment complexes because it's, it's tricky. So I didn't answer your question as to somewhat reasonable area. Your budget is pretty good. Um, I would say, um, close to the beach in the Tampa area. So beaches are not really in the Tampa area. They are Tampa Bay. It's three counties. I've already talked about that. But if you're in Tampa, you're actually in Hillsborough County on the other side, which is where the beaches are. Um, those would have, um, those would be closer to the beaches. So you'd be in Pinellas County. Um, I would say Seminole is a good place. Uh, Gulfport, Pinellas Park, um, you could probably find a nice rental with that budget, even closer to the beaches. If you wanted to do maybe a townhouse rental on the beach, um, you could go North to Largo, Bel Air, all those places are pretty close to the beach that are more residential, not on the beach themselves. Um, we're looking for a new muscle cars. It's fun. Um, we're looking for a new home in a resort style community to understand HOAs. What are your thoughts on communities where, um, they are dual use rent, no rent. Um, yeah, I don't understand the rent, no rent part, but I will talk about uh, resort style communities. Um, so that's another thing that I think people are surprised about when they come to the Tampa Bay area is that our neighborhoods, people think about Florida and they, they think of these, you know, big giant neighborhoods with these palm trees and these giant community pools and everything else. They exist. They're, they're here but they're mostly in the suburbs. So the city of Tampa and the areas that are closest to the city and Pinellas County do not have a lot of these really beautiful, well-maintained, you know, picturesque Florida looking neighborhoods. Most of those are in our suburbs. Wesley Chapel, the reason everybody loves Epperson is because it has a giant lagoon. It's really fun and beautiful. So I, I completely understand. Um, and then South, as you get, um, into Apollo Beach and Ruskin and Sun City and uh, Palmetto and Sarasota and Bradenton. Lakewood Ranch is a really good example of a house or of a neighborhood that's in the Sarasota area that is huge, massive. It's perfect Florida neighborhood. Um, and it was built basically from scratch on a big piece of land. So they were able to do that. But when you're closer to the city, you're not, you don't have all that land to make these big giant neighborhoods. So when people are looking for the typical Florida neighborhood, it is kind of hard to find in Hillsborough and, and Pinellas. You can find it in the Southeast area or North into Pasco. Um, I'm moving to Tampa area. Where should I hang my license? Do you mentor? Um, yeah, I wish I, I have people, um, that I am currently working with, um, to Karen and Chantal and Dale, if you guys are watching, um, I'm currently working with them. Unfortunately, that is all the time I have. And if you ask them, they will tell you, I don't really have a lot of time for them either. Um, so what I would recommend to anybody who wants to work here in real estate is to get with a brokerage that has a lot of, um, mentoring or join a team where your team leads will be able to mentor you. Um, I work with Smith and Associates, which is the largest luxury local, uh, company in the Tampa Bay area. And I love it because they are a local company. Um, we don't have to worry about shareholders or anything like that. If you want to just hang your hat and you don't want to pay a lot, there are a lot of, um, just flat fee brokerages around here, um, that you can look into. So, um, where's my favorite place to go for Cuban food? Yeah. So if you guys don't know, uh, the Tampa Bay area has amazing Cuban food. Um, uh, everyone knows about the Columbia. That was kind of, you know, that's the oldest restaurant in town. They have amazing Cuban food there. Um, I personally, there's uh, a restaurant in Seminole Heights called Bodega that has amazing, uh, Cuban sandwiches. And then, um, Stone Soup Company in Ybor City has really great Cuban sandwiches as well. La Segunda, um, all the traditional places. Um, uh, I do love a good Cuban sandwich for sure. Um, what are the best school districts in the Tampa Bay area? I can't answer that. Um, but thank you for the question. I do get it all the time. So I will refer you, um, to the education guide and the, um, the uh, uh, Florida State School grades, um, those tend to correlate very, very much. How's the job market in Tampa? Um, I, I don't really know. Um, other than I do know our unemployment rate is very, very low here. Um, 
people that are in the service industry, I believe a lot of them are back to work. Um, most everything is open here at this time. Um, would you say a generator is worth it in the North? The electricity doesn't really go out, but I know in Florida it goes out more often. The heat and humidity is another level. Oh yeah. After a hurricane, um, Irma came through in 2017, I didn't have power for five days and yeah, you start feeling like you're living in a bowl of soup. Um, so a generator can be worth it if you're really concerned about it. I, you know, because power doesn't go out tons, especially if you're in an area where your power lines are buried. Um, but there are some pockets where just oddly the power goes out a lot. So I would say live here for a while before you make that decision. Um, I have lived in the Tampa Bay area for 21 years now. And I, I mean, I can really only imagine or remember a handful of times where my power was out for any significant amount of time that I was bothered by it. And Hurricane Irma was definitely the worst. Um, so it kind of depends on where you live, but I, I don't know if I would run out and do it right away. If you have anything um, really important that you want to make sure has power, you know, uh, anything refrigerated or something like that, if you have anything refrigerated that's valuable, um, then I would get a portable generator just in case power does go out. That would be important. This is fun. I could do this all day. I feel like I do do this all day. So um, do I suggest buying a home with a septic tank? Um, a septic tanks are very common in um, like the non, in the neighborhoods that aren't very big. So out in Lutz and Odessa, um, the more rural areas, there's a septic tank. I, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't buy a house with a septic tank. I do highly recommend that you do a uh, septic inspection before you purchase the house. Um, so, and, you know, they, they will pump the septic tank and then inspect it. Um, and hopefully they do a good job. I did have an issue last year with a buyer who, who had a septic inspection and then had septic problems. So that is, that is definitely difficult. I, I struggled with that. Um, but anyway, well, <laughs> um, yeah, so the restaurant scene, let's talk about the restaurant scene for a little bit. Let's talk about Tampa in general. Um, as far as restaurants are concerned, I would say in the 21 years that I've lived in the Tampa Bay area, I think one of the things that I'm most proud of is how the restaurant scene has emerged here and how many, uh, great concepts and local chefs that we have that are bringing really, really great um, food choices to us down here. Um, and you tend to find a lot of those in the the city centers. So downtown St. Pete has amazing restaurants. Um, I was just at the mill recently, which I love. They have one in South Tampa as well. Um, South Tampa has a lot. Downtown Tampa will have some. Um, Seminole Heights, which is an area that a lot of people just don't really think about, has some of my favorite restaurants in town. Um, I mentioned Bodega, uh, which is a great for Cuban food. And next to it is Mandarin Heights, which is a great bar if you guys are looking for a place to hang out. Um, but in general, it's it's very, very notable how much it's changed. Um, and it's becoming a destination for foodies. It's becoming a destination for people who love beer. We have tons of breweries here, um, both in the Tampa side and the St. Pete side, uh, very popular ones, ones that are known around the country. Cigar city is probably the most popular one. Um, but yeah, I'm very proud of, of where Tampa has gone. If anyone watched my restaurant video that I did probably well over two years ago, I, I need to edit that desperately um, and uh, talk about some of the other places that that I've enjoyed recently that are a little bit more local. Obviously, everyone knows Burns, um, which I love too. But uh, yeah, thanks for the question, Tim. Um, How is the Southwestern market and your thoughts on multifamily homes? Um, Southwestern market. Not sure which area you're referring to as far as uh, the southeastern market is really what we're talking about as far as Tampa. <laughs> how often a crocodile climbs up from lakes and poses a threat to human? Is it safe to walk along a lake? How often a crocodile come into the backyard? Um, so they're alligators, um, different uh, most of the time here in Florida. You're dealing with alligators. I never recommend that you walk small dogs or small children around lakes or ponds because that is obviously where they live. But I also don't really know why you would really be doing that, um, at least not right there on the shores. 
Um, how often do they do that? Um, I, I don't really know. But again, just like sinkholes and hurricanes and tornadoes and bugs and things like that and snakes that we deal with here in the Tampa Bay area um, and in Florida in general, um, it's, it's part of life here. So you get used to it. Uh, I have a lot of clients who really like alligators and like seeing them uh, in the ponds. They've been here for a lot longer than we have. And as long as humans aren't feeding them, for the most part, they stay to their themselves. Um, <laughs> okay, Brandon Southwest. Yeah. Um, yeah, Brandon, St. Pete, very, very different areas in general. Um, any condo buildings in the suburbs? I don't want to be in a city, but close to one. Yeah, there, there are a few, um, for instance, in the West Chase area, there's a couple condo options up there, um, both within West Chase and just outside of West Chase and a neighborhood called Lake Chase condos. So yes, they, yes, there are. Um, I, I'll answer the question pretty briefly there cause I can't name them all, but, but yes, there are. Um, let's see. I love Krabby Bill's. Yeah, the St. Pete Beach is is a lot of fun. Um, Treasure Island is fun. I encourage anybody who's coming here to visit. Uh, if you're, you know, if you if you want to come and enjoy the beaches, there's other places other than Clearwater Beach. So you know, it, it's easy to go there because everyone knows it. But you know, expand out and go to some of the other beaches. Uh, they're really nice. Armature Works. Yeah, let's talk about Armature Works. Oh, I totally missed that when I was talking about restaurants. Um, talking about downtown Tampa for a little bit. Um, again, an area that has changed dramatically since since I lived here, since I moved here in 1999. Um, the River Walk in downtown Tampa basically runs from the convention center to up up to Armature Works. Um, Armature Works is a um, uh, remodeled. I I know there's a better word for it. I can't think of it right now. Um, water factor. <laughs> I'm totally messing this up. If someone can help me with what it is. Anyway, it's a beautiful old building that they've redone. And um, it has standalone restaurants in it. Uh, Steelbach is in there. Okinola is in there. It has an amazing uh, rooftop bar called Inbird. And then and the main part of it, there are a lot of local restaurants that have um, basically walk up storefronts. So you order and then you, you pick up your food. And it's like a big fancy food court. And it is fabulous in every way. It's fun. It's um, delicious. It's definitely a place to be. And it's so big that it can be crowded and you don't really feel like it's too crowded, uh, which is what's really nice about it. They have a lot of event space there. If you have a very large event, it's a great place to be um, for uh, a lot of the 400 to 500 people events happen at Armature Works. And then right next to Armature Works is uh, Ulele, which is one of our popular restaurants. Thank you. Armature Works is a fully restored mixed use building that breathes life into historic Tampa Heights neighborhood. Yeah. So Tampa Heights, Riverside Heights, Seminole Heights, all those areas are, um, uh, they have been up and coming for a long time, but they have definitely uh, become even more up and coming at this point. There's a lot of new development going on there. That's very exciting. Um, let's see. Oh, um, I wanted to talk really quick about Midtown. Um, so Midtown Tampa is under construction right now. Midtown is on Dale Mabry, um, just kind of in between downtown and the West shore area, which is why they call it Midtown. So it's brand new. There's an, uh, a loft hotel there. They just opened a very large REI store. They're opening a, uh, Shake Shack, which we don't have one here yet. So we're excited about that. Um, they have, uh, they're also opening, uh, apartments there. And then, um, I'm forgetting the last one. Oh, um, uh, Chris Pont, who is a local, um, chef here is going to be doing his, uh, um, main restaurant there, which I'm very excited about. And then, um, there's something else and I totally am forgetting what it is off the top of my head. Oh, a Whole Foods. Whole Foods is going in there. Someone mentioned Whole Foods or Publix. Um, Whole Foods is going there. So there's a lot of development going on in that area which is it kind of, I would consider it more of a South Tampa area than, um, than any other suburb. It's more South Tampa. Um, hearing a lot of, oh, thank you. I'm gonna have a drink. It's hard to talk constantly. It shouldn't be. I feel like I do it all the time. Shake Shack. Yes. I know. I'm excited too. I think that's you, Jason. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, three dot dash. Yes. 
So if you guys want another vegan restaurant, and I'm going to forget the name of it off the top of my head. So if uh, Tim could chime in here, there is a vegan Italian restaurant in Seminole Heights that is ridiculously good. And I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it is so good. And I wouldn't say I'm a big vegan person, um, but but yeah, it's really good. Do y'all have breweries there? Yeah, I talked about that. Tons of breweries. Um, Cigar City is our biggest. Uh, I, I I don't even If you watch the Downtown St. Pete video, there's a lot in there. Um, Angry Chair, um, Seventh Sin, ground, ground Foods. Ground Foods, is that what it's called? Okay. I don't think I would have guessed that. But anyway, that's it. Eat there. It's delicious. Um, yeah, REI. All right, Oakland, California. Yeah. That'll be fun. It'll be different here. World of Beer is a good place to go from what I've heard. Yeah, World of Beer has a lot of different, it's obviously like the name says, the world of beer. <laughs> a lot of different beers there to try. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tampa in general, restaurant scene, uh, brewery scene, everything is growing a lot. Um, we didn't talk much about downtown St. Pete and it, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about it because I love it so much. Um, downtown St. Pete is beautiful. It has lots of parks that, um, that are up that border the Bay. So if you're looking and you like a city area, but you also like a lot of park space and walking space and, uh, art culture, um, there's a lot of that down there. The restaurants are great. The, um, there's lots of breweries there. Uh, it's really, really a nice place to live. Um, I always tell people if I could live anywhere right now, I would probably live in downtown St. Pete. Um, I have to be here. Um, yeah, I already, I know I talked about the flood already in Manatee County. Uh, unfortunately I just don't know that much about it at this point. Um, so I would say just watch the news. Um, okay. Well, I don't know. I think I'm good. If anybody has any pressing questions, then um, I will try to do this again. I feel like it went pretty well. Um, I was, um, okay, sorry. Um, so anyway, if you guys are looking for something else to watch on the channel, if you want to hear more about the uh, moving to Florida in 2021, I did a specific video on moving to Florida in 2021. Some of the videos that don't get a lot of uh, views are my frequently asked question videos. There's, I think, two or three of them on there. It's a lot like this where I'm going through questions and answering it. So if you take a look at those, that they might have a lot of answers to the questions that you're looking for. And in those, we can embed links. So like the school district information is in a frequently asked questions video. Um, so take a look at those two. Those would be the ones that I would toss you to. But anyway, thank you all for watching and asking questions and everything. I had so much fun doing this. I have no problems. I can do this all the time. I feel like it's what I do anyway. I want more live streams. Me too. Let's do more live streams. This was easy. I feel like I could talk to everybody at once. Anyway, lots of fun. Thank you guys so much for joining me. With love, Melanie.